Last time out on Rise of Glory, we beat Birmingham City in the EFL Cup first round on penalties. And we looked quite good doing it. In the next game, we took on Burton Albion and beat them by six goals to nil. Our former players club was absolutely destroyed here and we had six different goal scorers. I can't remember the last time this has ever happened, but I'm happy with this score in either way. I start to wonder if McCann's regressing his choice already. The next game we had was his Rex and then we beat them by a goal to nil after Castello scored his second goal in two matches. A really good start to the season for us. Three wins out of three so far. We then took a Sutton United in the EFL Cup second round and beat them by six goals to nil. A second 6-0 win this month already. We're looking really good. Even if they had two men sent off, it didn't change the fact that we were absolutely dominant in this match. The next game we had was against Cardiff City and we beat them by two goals to nil and they had just three shots on goal and one on target. We looked completely comfortable and it was a delightful viewing. The next game we had was in the EFL Trophy and we beat Portsmouth by two goals to one, having to come from 1-0 down to win the match. It was only the second time we considered the goal this year and the goal we considered was a bizarre one. All I'm going to say is that this should never have been allowed to go in. The fact that Ward scored an own goal from that is honestly a little embarrassing. Before the game against Portsmouth, we actually made some transfers dealings and we sold Paris Mahoma to Birmingham City. He signed for them for £190,000, so we didn't make a loss for our purchase. And honestly, he wasn't amazing. He only got two assists last year and... I did kind of use him as a starter and as a bench player as well, but even so, while the average rating was decent, he wasn't incredible, and we definitely got better value for our money with him gone now. And we've also let Omotoyi go out on loan to Bradford City. He got a hat-trick in the EFL Trophy on his debut, so he's definitely doing well there. He's got a goal in League 2, so I'm hoping he'll get some development in. But there's a reason he wanted to leave. And we've got Oakley Cannoneer back on loan from Liverpool. And this time for an entire season. Now, he's already done quite well for himself so far with three goals in his first five matches. But hasn't scored in a while. So I'm hoping he'll start to pick things up. But a good person to have on loan. And then I bought Zidane Iqbal on a free transfer to replace Paris Makoma. And I'll say it here now. Zidane Iqbal is a huge upgrade on what we had before and I'm delighted with the fact that we've got the guy in on a free transfer after Manchester United let him go on a free. But yeah, Manchester United released him. He was available on a free transfer. We've signed him. We've given him a release clause in his contract which if it's activated, I'll be very happy with. £6 million. Thank you very much. I'd love that kind of deal to come into my bank. But after the Portsmouth game, we took on Bolton Wanderers and Oakley Cannoneer made his League 1 debut for us and got a brace. And this is the only time he's scored for us in the league so far, but I'm happy with his performance because he showed once again why I am so excited for his return. The next game we had was against Sutton United and they went down to 10 men again. And this time we beat him by just 3 goals to nil, bending him with a goal and blocks him with a brace showing that he can be very good on his day as well. But then we dropped points for the first time this season and failed to score for the first time in over 30 matches in all competitions against Plymouth Fire Goal. Drawing one all was not ideal, but they had two goals ruled out for offside, so I kind of feel rather fortuitous if I'm completely honest with you. And then we took on Stoke City in the EFL Cup third round and we beat them 7-6 on penalties, Bloxham getting another brace to his name. He's starting to turn up with the goals, and I'm really happy with his performance here. And then for the first time this season, we conceded a goal in the league in a 2-2 draw against Leighton Orient. They got a late, late equaliser, which I wish that they hadn't have gotten because it means that we've gone two games that I win for the first time this season, but we are still unbeaten. And it's the first time this year we've even conceded the goal in the league. So hopefully this is just a one-off thing and we won't be coming back to Rue the day we drop these two points. So far though, we are in second place, a point clear of Lincoln City. And we are just two points behind Oxford United who've only dropped two points. We've dropped four 
and we're still unbeaten so as far as i'm concerned we're looking quite good lewis ward has got seven clean sheets in his first eight matches and the game against listen orient was the first time he'd even conceded in the league so we've got a good team as far as i'm concerned the media prediction now has us down in fourth place canada is immediately in the media dream 11 so once again a great signing and we're just happy to have him back and with our opponents today i hope we can do good good things for today we're taking on lincoln city in a game that could be hugely important because they are in third place oxford check on charlton and with us trying to defend the efl trophy and us trying to win league one and get promotion to the championship for the very first time i feel like this is a massive game for our point of view and could really decide a few things and also if it means that we end our winless streak of two games in the league that's great i want to win as many games as possible and i don't like the idea that we are dropping points like we are right now so hopefully another win will ease my nerves and ensure that we go further up the table also the fact the person in fourth place after we've been six nil early in the year really shows you just how good of a win that actually was but either way a good game to show what we can do today and this is going to be my lineup for the match ward noland fish hap colson carr iqbal bellingham mitchell mother seal and cannoneer on the bench we've got smith warner jenks clarkson costello masuan hesse and bloxham bloxham has been really good so far from the bench and in all competitions so i've got reason to believe we've got a lot of good players the fact that I've got four different players who've got three plus goals for us already this year is promising. And the fact we've got another three more with two goals to the name in all competition is even better. So we're definitely not shy of scoring goals. I just want to make sure that we beat Lincoln to ensure that what we've done this season at the beginning wasn't just a one-off thing. But either way, let's see how we do against Lincoln City. Okay, so we've got a throw and Hap is on the ball now. Iqbal, Carr... I'm really happy with this squad right now. It feels like it's my best squad I've ever had. Carr finds Mitchell. Benningham now can play ball to Kennedy. Doesn't find some other seal instead. He goes for goal and it's in. It looked like it was deflected off the defender and it's found back in the net. But that's really, really good. And we have the lead inside 21 minutes. And was this deflected or not? I actually don't know if it was or not. But I'm not going to complain if it was. Because it means we just had a good time. But mother seal... I think it's hit the defender and it's gone into the post. So that's absolutely perfect. 1-0. Okay, so we've got a throw again. Colson now on the ball. Finds Benningham. He finds Carr, who has been booked. I might need to ease him off his tackles, actually. I'm going to do that now. Pause the game. Ease him off his tackles. And then do that. But Long's going to play it long. It just writes itself. Noland. Not the best idea in the world, but we get the ball back anyway. Benningham now on the ball. His mother still tried to find Cannon there. Didn't quite find him. Almost like he wasn't expecting the pass to go through so quickly. But his Dale, Sawson, we get the ball back. Mother still intercepts. Oh, Mother still on the ball now. Thanks to Cannon there's through ball. And Mother still has to hold the ball up a little bit. Finds Benningham. Can play the cross. Finds Iqbal. Goes for goal. Hits the bar. It's gone over. Good attempt. They got a free kick now. Dale to take it. And we should be fine. Fish heads it away. And Hat just. Boots of the way, so that's great. Dale now plays the ball forward. It's not the best idea that he's ever had. And Colson now gets the ball away to Benning and back to Colson. Plays the ball forward, trying to find Cannon there. Didn't really work, but Hodson now on the ball. Hap heads the ball away to Carr. And we can get a counter attack going here. Mitchell on the ball. Just waiting for the right pass. Here's Benningham. And now Mamasil, Cannon there in the middle, waiting. And Mamasil goes for goal himself. And perhaps he should have passed on that sort of angle. Not happy with him here, but Carr will take the corner either way. And we can make this too. We've got enough tall bodies in there to do some damage. And it's cleared over as far as Iqbal. And he's got the ball still. He's now played that wide to Carr. Here's Fish. And I think that should be the end of the highlight. But Bellingham goes for golf from there. He's at the bar. It could have been two. So far, so good. We're doing what we need to be doing. And that's great. And as things stand, Oxford are winning as are Burton. So this is very important to ensure that we keep ourselves going at the top. Oxford winning means that we just can't afford to drop points. And with Burton also winning, it means that they will be level on points with Lincoln, but the goal difference that we destroyed will not be a reason for that. Either way though, let's see what we can do in the second half. I'm going to tell the players that we don't want to be complacent and 
let's do more. Of course, someone gets stressed immediately. I'll just tell them I have faith. Apparently, it didn't work. Okay, Hap on the ball with a free kick. He was the player that was stressed by a complacent talk, which I don't think should be an issue, though. Here's Benningham, finds Mother Sill, try to find Kananir. Again, it just seems like Kananir's really good. He's got the pace that we want him to have for the role he plays, but he just doesn't seem to connect right now, weirdly enough. And Morgan, what is Ward doing? What is Ward doing? Well, that is lucky. I don't know what he was doing there, but that absolutely threw me off that he was going so far out to meet the player there. And Hap is now booked. I might take Hap off, actually, I've decided. Most because he's stressed. Let's take him off. And let's make the other change be Clarkson on for Carr. That'll work. Two players who've booked. Get them both off the pitch. Okay, so... Lincoln have a free kick. I think the substitutes have been made. Dale plays it in the middle. And Colson didn't get there. It was actually a Lincoln shot. Okay, they got a free kick now. Dale to take. It's been saved. What a save from Ward to deny that free kick going in. But not ideal that they've had the shot in the first place. And the fact that there's another highlight immediately. And the fact that like there was a new highlight is concerning. House didn't get there. Warner didn't said. And Rooney could go for goal from range. He does. And Ward again falls into a save. I'm going to take Kananir off because he's not had the best of gains. If Bloxham's going to come on and we'll work from there. Lincoln have been the better team right now. I'm going to take Colson off. I'm going to bring Mitchell into his role because he can literally play there, which is perfect for him. And it's why I have him there. And we're going to have Costello on now in that position. And for my last change, I am going to have to make a last change, which is going to be Jenks on for Benningham. So let's go with that and see what we can do. I'm actually going to slow down the tempo, but I don't know if that's going to make a difference or not. But Dale on the ball for Lincoln. I don't know why it seems like they have all the momentum, but Nolan only hits as far as Gallagher. And Gallagher goes for goal and Ward again falls into a save. This has not been our best performance so far. It really hasn't. And I might have to try and raise the tempo a little bit as Gallagher plays the ball in the middle. Dale now on the edge there. It goes for goal, blocked. And Ward should get to that. He does. Okay. I am going to raise the tempo here just a tad bit and see what we can do with it. But I don't know. I just realized I look at the momentum, which you can see at the top there. As soon as we raise the tempo, it feels like we've got the momentum back and blocks them. I don't know why they were running away for the ball there, but Solson's forcing to make a clearance. Here's Mitchell as the left back. Mother Seal plays it across to blocks them. He's hit the post. He was offside anyway. It would not have counted, but good chance. So the reason I have the match momentum is because I can see whether or not we need to change something. And the reason I love the low tempo is so if we needed to tinker things like go from a higher tempo to a lower tempo or they go up and up to a higher tempo, it means I can just dictate the tempo whenever I want. But I don't like having a high tempo straight off the bat because it means that I could get caught out by stray passes or bad balls. And that's why I do it this way. But we get the win if away against Lincoln City. And it's a good win, to say the least, considering they're in third place when we took them on today. And despite our best attempts, we don't go back to the top of the table because Oxford did win by two goals to nil. Burton threw a two-goal lead against Millwall away. So that's not ideal for them. Wigan and Birmingham are both in a relegation zone. Millwall are in a relegation fight. And that point was very important for their point of view as Wickham Wanderers go up to fourth place with a 3-1 victory over Cheltenham Town. So this could go very much against them, couldn't it? But as far as I'm concerned, promotion and a title is my aim this year for League One, as well as the EFL Trophy, because I want to retain that. And we've got nine games about losing here, so that's a good start, isn't it? Oh, and we've also got Derby County in the EFL Cup. So we could get to the quarterfinal of the EFL Cup as a League One side. So that could be interesting. Whether or not that's something I actually want to happen remains to be seen. And also, just so I can go over this quickly, there hasn't really been a big job that's got my attention that's come up yet. So there's that. And any club that's currently a 2.5 rating or below isn't something that should get my interest right now. But it is what it is. That being said, I've just signed a new contract. 
literally last week with the clubs. So it's going to take a good bit of negotiation to get me away from Forest Green Rovers. And they have to pay 130000 to get me away from the club. Which, for a lot of clubs, should be affordable. Either way though, I am going to end this here. I hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves. I hope you guys will like and share this video. And that you will subscribe to the channel. It really does help me a lot. Do you think we can get past Derby County in the EFL Cup? Can we win the EFL Trophy again? And will we win League One this year? I want to hear your thoughts and opinions and all of that down below. But anyway, until next time, goodbye and well, good night.